why I love this podcast is because it's one thing to experience culture, but it's another thing to archive it. Everything is in divine order. There's no success without an L, first and foremost. What's up, guys? It's Alexander Blaine, and you're listening to Creative Ambiance. What up, my good people? Welcome back to Creative Ambiance. Sitting next to my right, I got my good brother, Alexander Blaine. He is the owner of Bueno, yes, a sir. clothing brand, a Hispanic clothing brand, which I definitely want to get into. I love the designs. I Thank love you. the whole motto of it. Thank you. But first, I, uh, I really wanted to get into a little bit more about yourself, your journey, how you came up. And yeah, just talk a little bit more about what made you into the creative person that you are today? So you are currently based in Los Angeles, but yes, you're sir. not from Los Angeles, no, right? No, no, no. Where are you what, where do you where do you call home? How about that? Kissimmee, Florida. Home is Florida is home yeah, for you. Florida is my home. For okay. Sure. Born in New York, but Florida is what raised me for sure. When when did you move to Florida? What age were you? Uh, like four. Four years old. Yeah, so I don't really have much of a childhood like in New York. I have family still there to this day. I was always that kid that like went away for holidays and like summer. Mm -hmm. That's where like the birth of like the fashion and clothing became apparent to me when I realized that those things were in such abundance versus back home, you know, growing up in the South, we don't have, you know, urban outfitters, local skate shops. Those were like the resources that we had available to us. yeah florida's home so that's interesting so when you were visiting new york you started to pick up on like cultural it was when i originally was able to go out by myself okay and through the universe i stumbled across places like supreme and dqm and like the original mercer that's now closed and a lot of those other boutiques that there's still plenty of boutiques there now but soho's not the same yeah but that general area of like going to manhattan Lower East Side, exploring that as a young, you know, Floridian at the time, really drastically different. And I realized that I could get fly, bring stuff back home that Ooh, people didn't have access yeah. to. People would be like, yo, where'd you get that? This is fly, Bob. I'm like, I don't even know if I want to tell you. Yeah. Because you might try to buy. It. But now, now I was like, I was gatekeeping. Yeah. Now I don't care. But um, yeah, luckily, New York is like the base frame of the entire platform and springboard that is like what bueno is today i could imagine too around that time because like the era of Mm -hmm. i don't know mid 2000 Mm -hmm. 2010 2015 like that time was just different over there Mm -hmm. so if that that was the those were the years where you were visiting and picking up from like i could imagine how it was a cultural hub really Mm -hmm. you know what's which is what I believe is happening now. The renaissance of those mid-2000s is what I believe is happening here in LA now with all the amazing brands and creatives that are bubbling in the space and taking up space, especially from a cultural perspective, people of color yeah, that are now finally getting an opportunity to like open these doors and have these conversations and do these collabs and operate at such a high level. LA is a really is in a really special place and I don't think people realize the magnitude of the moment that we're having right now. Yeah. Very true. And we really won't know the impact until later. That's a good point cuz in know? like 2030, 2040 we're going to be like damn, 2020 to mm-hmm. 2023 like well, somebody else is doing an interview and they're like mm-hmm. I remember this 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 and this. We're sitting at home listening to it. Maybe a younger person that we admire, like, this is the newest. I feel like we were saying like earlier. (laughs) Yeah, we were talking about off camera, how the filler words. I keep saying like, (laughs) nevertheless, (laughs) yeah, there will be a person we may admire or we're interested in that has a podcast or opportunity, an interview on a magazine, so on and so forth, that mentions the things that we have done. And then only then will we realize the perspective of someone else. Wow, yeah. Interesting to think about. I never thought about it that way, but I do understand what you're saying because there is a significance of what's going on right now with Mm -hmm. all of the brands that are coming up and Mm -hmm. all of the amazing events and collaborations Mm -hmm. that are happening. And I mean, that's, you, you, we talked a little bit about this off camera. You asked me why I wanted to do this. And mm-hmm. that purpose has changed a little bit from the beginning. Mm-hmm. Um, but as it stands right now, it's like, I 
have been wanting to cover this movement and this renaissance that's mm -hmm. happening right now, which mm -hmm. is why I have guests on like you that are Thank doing you. amazing things it. with Bueno because you're you. very much involved Thank in you. what's going on right now. So to get back to uh, to the storyline, how was life like for you as a child in Florida growing up back then? <laughs> what were some of the experiences that you had? Country. Country? Yeah. Okay. I feel like a lot of people may not see, they see the exterior and probably don't think that I had the childhood that I did, but I grew up very wholesome, dual parent household, one older brother, we're 10 years apart. I was outside a lot, like football, basketball, boxing, fishing. I grew up next to, when we moved, well, we moved around a lot when I was really younger, trying to get a home. Then once my parents were able to like actually lay the foundation, the root, like this is where we're going to be and they still live in that house to this day. Wow which is also rare. That's crazy. They just yeah. celebrated 45 years together. Oh, wow, that's, also very, rare. that's very rare in itself. Um, catching turtles, like otters, gators, random deer, boar. You were doing all that? That's the type of wildlife that I grew up around. Oh, man. So there was a lot of wildlife around. I like, see, I keep saying like, fuck. It's all good. Um, <laughs> I had lizards growing up, crested geckos to be specific, tortoises, turtles, rabbits, Doberman. Wow. I spent a lot of time outside like riding bikes, playing basketball. Basketball was like my main, that also helped me care about clothes, it was just footwear. Okay, because hip hop, fashion, basketball, certain sports just are synonymous with cultural relevance, basketball being an obvious one. Yeah. So yeah, that's kind of, but yeah, I grew up pretty country. like. Yeah, my dad had a, a at one point bought a pretty small boat. Nevertheless, nevertheless, a boat, fishing. I lived forty minutes from the beach. Okay. By the time I was able to drive, I would skip school and go to the beach, just like Florida life: hurricanes, tornadoes, <laughs> tropical depressions. Like, yeah, pretty country. It's crazy because I mean, you you said this a little earlier. You've been out here for what seven, eight years now, mm -hmm. and it's pretty cool that you've been able to experience polar opposites, right? Oh, yeah. Because obviously where you live in Florida, that's the whole other side of yeah. the country. It's not like that anymore. What do you mean? Back home. Like it's not, the life isn't like that anymore? Yeah, right? it's not as, Orlando's is right next to where I grew up. Okay. But Disney's actual theme parks and land is in Kissimmee. Oh. So as Disney grew, and as people became displaced from like hurricanes from Puerto Rico, even with, you know, the unfortunate, um, I don't mean to get political, but mm -hmm. with uh, Trump, mm -hmm. a lot of people came to Florida because it's a red state. That is true. That's so, changed the You know, it's dynamics. a lot. It's very different now. The city's growing, both Orlando and Kissimmee, just the general Central Florida area is expanding. It doesn't look mm -hmm. anything like what I grew up in now, but... It happens. So when you go home, do you kind of feel it? Like, damn, things are different out here now. Yeah, for sure. Um, that's why I did this zine. Um, we're all just a kid from somewhere. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to try to capture through photography and print the home that I grew up with. Okay. The things that I felt like were still mainstays in the community. But things are changing so rapidly. Like, there's only a select few things that are still there from when I grew up. But gotcha. change is the only constant, so you can't. Yeah. You can't stop it. That applies to everything. Yeah. Yep. Do you you mentioned having a, a stable household in yeah. regards to your parents growing yeah. up. Yeah. Were they were they creatives at all? Or I was I'm just nah, I'm cause... trying to figure out where you got the creative <laughs> spark when you were younger. Um, you know what it is? Imagination. Imagination. I think okay. as just a human being, majority of our ideas come from imagining them first. And I just always had a a, a vivid imagination. And I always just wanted to create things. And I think my love for science, I always found animals to be creative because they had to make it with nothing with the earth. Yeah, that's true. They're just out in the wilderness creating a life. And through my imagination, I'm a huge, like, I love Jurassic Park and like dinosaurs and Godzilla growing up a lot. My mom was big into science. Okay. So sci-fi is also very, a very imaginative genre of film watching a lot of those uh, movies with my mom or on my own, you know, watching things like The Mummy, 
Yeah. As a kid, it, 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 it activates your imagination. It really does. Because you're thinking of these times with like the, py- the pyramids. Wow, what a time. Mm-hmm. Godzilla obviously doesn't exist, but his original story would be is that he's born from an atomic, which the movie also has a political background of, you know, the Japanese dealing with warfare and those things. Which but you don't realize when you're a kid and you he, grow up and you're like, oh, okay. exactly. Mm-hmm. But it's, um, yeah, I never really put too much thought into it. But even to this day, I'm a big like I, I use my imagination all the time. OK, even to like think into the future, I imagine like what things could be like. Yeah. But part of the imagination is that you have to put the work in behind it. But I believe um, it just comes from my imagination, honestly. I just get inspired by so many things, and I always imagine things daydreamer as a kid. I spent a lot of time outside, and I think that helped. Yeah, spark the imagination. Because you get, I don't know about, I'm not going to speak for you, but like I feel like most people, me included, get inspiration from experiencing things and if yeah, you're constantly experiencing things as a kid i could imagine that's why our imaginations yeah. are yeah you know because my parents my mom came from puerto rico okay when she was like 16 wow to the bronx my dad was born in new york from the les they had a very different upbringing than, than me you know and my brother when we moved to florida i think they still were allowing us new york freedom which kids really don't have nowadays. Kids don't play outside as much as they used to. You don't see kids riding bikes as they're used to because, you know, technology. Yeah. But when you're outside and you're experiencing life, it teaches you different things. It gives you different skills and it feeds the imagination. You almost have to use your imagination to use your best judgment. Yeah. You have to imagine, if I did make this decision, would my mother... Or my father be upset with this. <laughs> yeah, you do. So yeah. you you know you're you're using um, your museum. I mean, you're um, I was say museum because I had a thought in my head, but you're using your imagination. I was gonna say another big inspiration for me was museums. Museums. Yeah, I think they helped jog my 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 imagination a lot. Was there a lot of them in Florida or where you're from? No, or? it's New York. Oh, it's New York. Yeah. Okay. When my mom visit. would take me to like museums. Um, my dad was like really working a lot. He okay. was more like focused on my sports life, oh, um, basketball, things of that nature. My mom more so nur- nurtured the science, like imaginative side of things. So grateful to have them both. Yeah. Grateful, very grateful. Lucky. Yeah, yeah I, Lucky. I, very much so. Yeah. Like a lot of, you don't hear that too many times Mm-mm. these days, unfortunately. Yeah. I have a great relationship with my parents. That's amazing. I, I, I talk love to that. them almost every day, if not every day. And I urge everybody to do the same if you have family whether you guys are having problems you guys love each other regardless time goes by so very quickly Man, tell and me about it. you should definitely do everything that you can even if it means being the bigger person yeah and swallowing your pride or maybe even feeling like you're talking to a wall sometimes with family it can be like that but i urge you you know they're the only family that you have and when i mean family i don't only necessarily mean people who are blood relatives friends can be family too so just make sure those relationships are nurtured because it will make your world a better place. Very well said. Mm-hmm. And I, I feel you on that because the older we get, you know, I'm, I'm going to start entering my 30s and mm-hmm. and even... I'm 31. You're 31. Okay. Yeah. So we can talk about that too. Edit. And like, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> when, when, uh, even when you're in your 20s, whatever the case is, once you start living away from home, you the opportunities to see your parents and spend quality time with them just starts to diminish the older you get unfortunately and like it gets to be sad because i don't know i can speak for myself i'm at a point where when i see them whether it's every couple weeks Mm -hmm. uh, monthly it's like you know what you're gonna say they start to look older man and you start to really see the aging take place and like you realize your time is limited with Mm -hmm. them yep it was aziz anzari i was watching one of his interviews and he was talking about how if your parents only had 10 more years to live and you only went home twice a year, you're only seeing them 20 That's more times. That's crazy to think about. And, and he's like, is that enough for you? Mm-hmm. To, you know what I mean? Is that enough? And I'm like, no, it's not. So nah, I try yeah. to do my best, but they're just so far. Yeah, they're on the other side of the yeah, country. But right? I understand that <sighs> sacrifice. Unfortunately, it's one of the things that a lot of people don't think about is sacrifice that it takes to make your dreams come true you lose time with friends and family 
things that are temporary in your life that you don't have forever will be sacrificed. And you don't think about it because we're so busy in our everyday lives, working through things, solving yeah. problems, celebrating, that we don't realize how much time goes by. Yeah, so. it, I guess that goes to the point of like, what do you value in Oof. your own personal life, right? Yeah, because sure. if you value sure. building bueno, building whatever goals that you have mm -hmm. as a forefront, a priority for you, you know what I mean? The rest falls into place. Yeah, I feel selfish sometimes for sure. Uh, you know, leaving everything that you know <laughs> to chase this, this dream and to make it a reality. But what's the alternative, not chasing your dreams? Yeah, that's not, that's not an option for me. So, you know, you just live with the consequences of your actions. Yeah. And just do, you know, everything that you can to keep in contact with loved ones. That's really what it comes down to. It's effort. If you want something in life, you'll put effort to make sure that you have it. Yeah, no, I 100%. And I think what helps me with that is quantifying things, right? It's mm -hmm. like, okay, I want to spend more time with my parents, but it's like, what does that look like? Yeah. You know what I mean? You can yeah, say that yeah. all you want, but it's, yeah. what is that going to do? Are you going to start to, are you, you going to visit them once a week? Are you going to call them once a week? Are you yeah. call them twice a week? Yeah. Are you going to, you know, maybe pick up a new hobby and do it with them some quality time? Yeah. It's like quantifying yeah. what that looks like. Yeah. I mean, I, the only thing I can do is at minimum is call. Yeah. At minimum. At least. Um, yeah, I think that's, that's, I think that's a healthy place to start is mm -hmm. at minimum a phone call. You're lucky if you can only have a 20 minute drive yeah. to visit a parent, a family member, somebody who has raised you. Again, like I said, it doesn't need to be somebody who is of your blood. That doesn't always make people family. Yeah. Anyone that you consider family that you want to keep a relationship with. Uh, everything in this world is temporary, including me and you. One day this will all be gone. Yeah. So it it's about be. what you make. You know, it's what you want your life to be. And I understand that family can be a difficult thing, but I'm very blessed and I cherish, you know, my family. That's my friends, my, you know, loved ones, whomever that I share this time with, I cherish them. So even the time that we have right now, this is something we're never, me and you are never going to get this time back right now. Never, ever. This is the, this is the end <laughs> of this time. We are only in the present. But we have chosen to, to, to do this together today. So even grateful on a micro level, you know, I think that helps push things along. Likewise, man. I know we've been, we've been meaning to make this happen yeah. for a good minute. And I, I, yeah. I, I knew, yeah. I already knew, I didn't know you, but I knew that you were somebody that I wanted to talk to. Thank and you. I could I already it. tell your mindset, Thank you. your perspective Thank on you. things is very unique. Thank you. And that's, I appreciate it refreshing Thank for you. me <laughs> i appreciate it thank you Katie. absolutely man but getting back to uh to the storyline there mm -hmm. so you mentioned um growing up in florida a little mm -hmm. bit how that was like what was mm -hmm. your first venture into anything creative whether it was music i know you, you said you mentioned you used to do music at one point was it music or fashion that you so i originally started with the blog the blog home. okay do that i just wanted to provide a platform for local artists because I do believe that Orlando does have a lot of special talent and people who deserve an opportunity. So I set out to kind of make that my mission. I would do like a lot of free events, like barbecues, all you can eat. Some of the best DJs in the city would come. People who oh. have events could set up more like a marketplace. Uh, so people can just like more creative hub to show others that you can come as a fan, you can come as a creator and still have benefits from being in this community. How old were you when you started that? Mm, I was already, excuse me, excuse me, you know, red wine is a city. You know, when you're over 30, <laughs> yeah, sometimes. different things start to activate you. <laughs> um, That's a fact. Uh, nah, I want to say, so actually, if I had to, you're making me dive deep right here. So I want to make sure that I'm saying this correct. I used to be part of this brand called Hair Brain Schemes. Hair Brain Schemes. Yeah, which means I get rich quick. Okay. It wasn't my brand. I always just wanted to help, and I was just a part of what they had going on. Through that, I realized like there are special people. Through that, I started the blog. Through that, events, blah, blah, blah. I might have been like 20. 20 years old. Okay. 20 years old around there. Uh, I was already like working at Nike, you know, doing, still paying attention to the culture, but not necessarily um, contributing. Got you. 
And when I graduated from high school, I actually worked at Atmos in Harlem in New York. So I graduated at 17, moved there, did a little summer. New York chewed me up, spit me out. I said, this is not for me. <laughs> Came back home, went back to school, started up the blog, started doing party promotion, started doing write-ups on artists and just reposting their, their work. That was my first... I'm trying to give the timeline because it's like skipping around a lot. There's like a lot of points that are like coming back into my memory. But yeah, of course. For the most part, the blog was like the springboard. Gotcha. And I'm sure that came with its own learning experience. Oh, yeah. While you were yeah, doing I realized it, right? that I didn't want to do a blog. You realized that. What were the drawbacks <laughs> for you? Um, it was dependent on other people's work. Uh, There's only so much that I can draw from others. Mm. There is this invisible ceiling sometimes in small towns where people feel as though they're not getting the recognition they deserve. That might not necessarily be the case. It's just when you, don't, when you only see certain things, we're all product of our environments. Very few of us realize that there's a whole world out there. That's why I encourage everybody to go travel. It will broaden your perspective and give you more of an idea of what needs to be done. Got you. Um, I did meet a lot of great people through there. It's people that I still talk to to this day, like Ricky. Oh, fire. And it, yeah, it just, it, it ran its course, but it just wasn't documentation of others just turned into a thing where it's like, it wasn't moving fast enough. It's dependent on other yeah. people, which is, yeah. And it's okay to be dependent on other people when you're running a business. If you want your business to amplify, you're going to have to put other people in position. Just these people weren't working for me. Got you. So it's kind of hard to be like, yeah, when's the next album coming? You know, you can only ask somebody that so many times. Yeah. So, yeah, but I'm appreciative of the, of the pocket. And I'm not saying that their work ethic wasn't there. Mm -hmm. There was plenty of talented people. Just, yeah, there's a lot. Like, shout out Kaylin Ellis. Shout out Devin Morrison. I know those are two uh, Orlando You're, t you're teaching me. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm out of touch completely, <laughs> honestly. They're, yeah, they're I, obviously... I think both of them aren't like necessarily new, but I just know those two from Florida and those are the homies and they're mm -hmm. uh, from Orlando specifically, but beautiful. They're sick. Yeah. Shouts out to them. When was your, uh, for, when did you decide to move to LA? At what point was that? So I was working with a friend. His name is Lawan James on social media. He's like a Latin influencer. Me and him were early to the game of like socials. Okay. Came out with Ricky for the first time. Just to visit? Just to visit. Him and like three other dudes I'd never even met in my life. But we needed a split cost. I was down. Yeah. Then when my homies thing started to pick up, I was going with him basically on tours, traveling everywhere, stuff with Tocitos, Telemundo, the White House. Wow. Um, movie premieres, so on and so forth. Long story short, we used to come here so much, it just felt like the universe was pulling me here. So after I finished all my contracted work that I had back home outside of him, I was leaving Nike at that point. I had already left. I'd been gone for like a year and some change and just decided to move here. Packed up my Audi A4 with my most valuable possessions <laughs> and I drove to LA. Oh, well, you whipped it all the way out yeah, here. Yeah, Dolo, wow. three days, Sheesh. 12 hours a day. Howard, talk, talk about how humbling those first maybe year or two was for you. I mean, we were earlier. mentioning it earlier, but thank God for Jenny, Joe, and Rick, Billy. They did the hard work. They were the ones who found the apartment. Mm. Billy, good friend of mine, ended up uh, having a beautiful young daughter. He left. I was sleeping. I had to wait six months for that, obviously, but just, you know, L.A. background story. I was sleeping on a twin-size air mattress for six months. Six in months. The, in the living room. It was popped as well. So oh. it would, like, seep in. So at the end of the night, I was, like, in a taco. Oh, and damn. I was right above a window. I had my closet, like a zip up Ikea closet. So anytime anybody would come over, they would basically be in my space. Oh, damn. It was difficult, but, again, it comes down to sacrifice. Yeah. I'm not acting like I'm... Like I did some magical thing because I slept on the twin side. You know, people yeah. people are doing that right now out of necessity, not mm -hmm. out of sacrifice. Yeah. So I'm grateful for the path, but that was more so the, the, what needed to be done if I wanted to make this work. I wasn't going to leave back home where you know, pretty much I had a good job, good friends, good opportunity, beautiful family. To come over here and fuck around. Can I curse? Yeah. Oh, understand. come come over here and like Freedom fuck of around. Expression. Yeah, come over here and like fuck around and waste time. Yeah. I'm not I'm not into that. So 
yeah, it just had to be done. And on my way here, I didn't have a job, but I worked for Nike for like five years at that point back home. And I got a call when I was in Louisiana from a Houston number and I blocked it. And I was like, I don't know anybody from there. They left me a voicemail. Just so happens that Nike was opening up a location at something called The Grove, which I'd never oh, heard of. Damn. And I picked up, called them back, was like, what's going on? They let me know they were hiring for something at The Grove if I wanted to help them open up the location. And I was totally game. So the day I got here, the next day I had a job interview. <laughs> That's crazy, yeah. Devon Tommy. Yeah, so then I was working there for a little while, and I got into the, what is it, the, um, what is what is the wheel that the rats run in? Um, a mouse wheel or whatever? Something. There's yeah. like a specific name oh, for it, but long story short, I was stuck in that wheel, and I was like, I didn't come all the way over here to be back working at Nike. Yeah. And then that's when things truly, I feel like things truly began, when I realized, like, that's when I broke the cycle of, I'm not going to do this anymore. Got you. Yeah. What, what, what was it that you decided that you wanted to start actioning on? After, exploration. After that? Oh, exploration. Just, okay. I didn't really know at the time. I know what I liked. I knew what I liked. I didn't know what I wanted to do. Mm. But imagination, exploration, Ooh. those things together, discovery. You don't know what you don't know. But if you're not actively seeking information, you know, many of us are not blessed where those things. Blessings don't just fall in our lap. You got to go or, get excuse it. me, opportunities. We're all very blessed. If you woke up this morning, you're blessed. But opportunities don't just fall on your lap. You have to create those. So through okay. that, that's when I was like, okay, cool. I'm going to start DJing or I'm going to start, you know, trying to work at these boutiques, you know, on Melrose or the Arts District, so on and so forth. And then that kind of opened Pandora's box to what could be done. But the true moment as far as bueno, because I know we're kind of like treading water on getting there, but mm -hmm. after Jenny and Joe moved out, it was me and Rick, and we needed a roommate, and Rick introduced me to this guy named Paolo. Paolo so, Wallow? Yes. Oh, shit. So okay. Paolo, I didn't know him at the time. We went to his crib for the first time ever meeting him. We were playing FIFA. Mind you, I was on like a, like I was spanking people in FIFA <laughs> for a minute, and he beat me like three to two, whatever, and you know, that kind of like bonded us in a weird way, even though I was salty, I'm not going to lie. You got like and a certain he, level of respect, like, okay. Yeah, like, okay, you're nice. <laughs> I can respect that. And then he ended up becoming our roommate. And when I saw what he was doing with him and Reggie, Reginald Sylvester, the artist, they had Rare Panther together. And what I saw, what I saw them build together and I saw what Paolo was doing, and I'm not minimizing what he was doing at all, but it inspired me. I, I was like, I can do this too, but I need to start it my own way. And I need to find things and do things my own way. I could have easily asked him for help. Like, hey, can you please help me get this off the ground? What do you think about But I wanted to learn because experience is the most valuable teacher that you can come across. I love that. So I surprised him, like, yo, what you think about this? And he's like, what, you're starting something? Because it all started with, like, photos of friends. I just wanted to market it that way, like, community and, like, documenting those around me and how special, like, look, look how special it is in my life. And what are the chances that I get you know, thanks to Rick and, you know, his willingness to bring somebody in. Cause I'm a lot more like, Ugh, I don't know, you know, if we should be really like bringing a stranger in. In, in regards to like your work or? No, into the house. Oh, into the house. Cause Jenny and itself. Joe moved. So, oh, so we needed, needed a roommate. Oh, got you. And, and he was so willing and um, yeah, I'm super grateful for those times. Uh, it taught me a lot that even to this day, like I still apply. Paolo is such a, like a good person to, especially him being Bolivian and Latino in this space yeah, um, and doing so many amazing things. And even Reggie going off and like doing his, you know, artwork and the amazing thing that he's doing in his space, it just shows like, you know, that this can be done. And, and you got to see it firsthand And too. I got to see it firsthand. Even like guys like Verdi, Verdi would come and sleep on our couch. Oh, wow. You know, we, we carved his first pumpkin ever <laughs> for, for Halloween together. Wow. So being able to see how close like these dreams can be it really like put a fire under me to take it more seriously. Even though I was DJing full time by that time when Paolo had come in, he also connected me with Commonwealth, which was my door into the street where LA scene. Got you, okay. And um, he had a friend who I knew named Anthony who was already working with Commonwealth because they're from DC and the rest was history. Wow, that's yeah. crazy. Yeah. All of that's those the things. short version. That's the short version. <laughs> I'm sure there's a lot of uh yeah. Of yeah. extended steps to mm -hmm. that. But 
I think I want to go back to something you were talking about is representation, Mm -hmm. seeing somebody that looks like you or that is within your culture Mm -hmm. doing something and how that makes you feel like it's possible for yourself. Yeah. And that just go and that just not even only I was just lucky enough to see up close and that goes for Ricky too. Ricky was like a go getter. Rick was never things would get difficult. They would do for everybody but he would always find a way. They were both too like driven, even though there's de- different industries, they're both very driven and they were focused on results. Mm. And to get results, you have to put forward action. Yeah. So actions are very easy things to see. There's a lot of things that you don't see people do behind closed doors, but when you see it happening and people actually doing it, that's when it becomes inspiring. It's easy to point at the result and be like, wow, this person does amazing things, but it's like, how? Where, where did it work ethic? Taking action, not being afraid to make mistakes and being able to roll with the punches with life, just in general. Yeah. And it was, uh, I don't know if that answered your question, but- No, you did, yeah. Um, yeah, just lucky, lucky to be, that moment was super pivotal. I love how all of that stuff happened so organically for yeah. you. You know what I mean? It kind of, what it tells me is that what you're doing now is purposeful and it's, I go back to that term again, but like divine timing, like all yeah. those things, it's not like you seek yeah. them out. Yeah. There's something to be said about seeking things out. Obviously, mm-hmm. like you mentioned, creating opportunities for yourself. Yeah, there's value in that too. But these things are almost meant to happen, meant yeah. to be. What are the chances? Exactly. Like if any of those things went differently, who knows what your trajectory would be. Even, even with my brand now, my sales guy, his name is Peter Bueno. His last name is Bueno. (laughs) So it's like, what are the chances that I come across a guy whose last name is the name of the company? (laughs) Crazy. What a... What are the odds? You can't, you can't write it. Mm -mm. You can't make it up. You can't. So what, when did you start? to concept bueno what 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 birthed that in the space of fashion i personally felt that there was a lack of representation for latinos caribbeans and african-american african however you want to slice it people of color there wasn't really a lot of brands telling just in general i think there's a lack of storytelling in in anything commercialized these days but I felt like there was no brands in stores that I can go and, and feel like this is for me. Even if I don't buy it, this is my background. This is something from my heritage. This comes from what I come from. I try to focus on making products that have that Latin root in it, but are for everyone. I don't want people who aren't Latino to feel like they can't wear what I make. And I didn't believe that that product existed at the at the level that I wanted to see it at in the space. Okay. And then that sort of birthed, like, why can't there be a brand that represents me or Rick or Paolo or whomever? And luckily, we're in a time, and that's why I say this is such a renaissance moment, where there's so many beautiful cultural brands. Mind you, they may not be design-wise something that I personally gravitate towards, but that's not what matters. It's the message. It's the initiative that the brands are building now where they have substance. And that resonates with me as a customer and as a fan because a lot of people forget to be fans in the things that they do because we get, you know, maybe you're competitive or you get so caught up in the day to day or like maybe you let money control you, which I'm guilty of sometimes too. You know, like I let bills and things like that weigh me down, but we all have bills and we all um, have day-to-day stresses but you have to stay a fan of not only your stuff but of other people's things too it's important and yeah i just think like i'm a fan of what's going on right now in streetwear and just in general like in music culture you know i tell people all the time like bad bunny is like a superhero to me yeah so it's a uh, we're having like this beautiful moment where there's a lot of ethnic and you know people of color like our music our food it's our on the passions, forefront too it's really pushing through a lot and on a high clip and i love that for not only myself but for everybody 100 yeah. percent, man and you see people I, my favorite part about that is when i see people on the street that i don't know whether it's here or just different parts of la 
rocking bricks and wood, wa- rocking yeah. uh, kids of immigrants, yeah. rocking Little Paisa Africa, boys, bueno, Little- Paisa boys, all, all, of, and I don't mean to not, we don't mean to not mention, any, but there's plenty of other yeah. brands that are. We can go all day. <laughs> yeah, that are doing like you know and flourishing. That's the difference. They're flourishing in these spaces, which I think says a lot about what people want to spend their money on. Yeah, I think. Now that things are getting a little tougher financially for a lot of yeah. people, they're becoming more conscious of how they spend and they want to spend their money on something that they know feels worth it to them, that doesn't feel fast. And I think these brands are doing a really good job of making the product not feel fast. Yeah. So And recycling that dollar within the community yeah. too, yeah, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's important. What what caused you to name it bueno mm. and it means good is mm. it mean is it, it means good like kind of a wordplay yeah of... it's kind of like how nike has just do it okay you see just do it and you still know it's nike yeah so i brand i try to brand them separately even though they're symbiotic they're a definition so if you not if you're not familiar with any spanish verbiage you just learned a new word bueno. like bueno okay it means good there you go Literally. i learned something <laughs> And I just felt at the time when I started about five, six years ago, even if you go back about 10 years, the clothing was very dark. It was very like, there was a lot of hub by air. And I'm not saying that that's a bad thing. It just didn't, again, didn't resonate with me. I'm a child, a child of the sun. You know, my people are melanated. We have rich history, rich color, rich foods, rich music, beautiful women, handsome men, beautiful islands, beautiful yes, countries, sir. vibrant music. We need that to be represented in our clothing as well and i think that color is contagious when you put on certain colors it makes you feel a certain way it attracts certain things you know there's signs to colors too what they represent how they make you feel they evoke emotions so i wanted to make something a little bit more vibrant i like to play with colors even though now i'm a little bit neutral you know, I am a business at the end of the day, so I do have to kind of play into what people are, are wanting to purchase, but still finding a way to put in storytelling and that vibrancy into um, what it is that we're doing. So the space just felt very dark and I wanted to put I wanted to inject color into that space. So um, which I really saw a lot from uh, Carrots on at the time. Ooh, yeah. yeah. And even Red Panther, they were like heavy on that, like blue. Yeah. And Carrots was heavy on that orange. And I thought that that made them stand out. Absolutely. It made it, it they, they weren't scared to play with color. And I think that uh, like a, being simple is difficult. Yeah. So it's finding that happy medium of how can I make something like vibrant, colorful, playful, has a story, but not cheesy. So yeah, I feel like that was more so like where my angle was in, in building, you know, what Bueno is. Is there something to be said too about the designs you choose and the collections in regards to like yeah. different messaging? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, hmm. Storytelling. I know I keep going back to that. I think in, hmm, I want to make sure I say this correctly. Mm-hmm. Coming up as a fan, I looked at Nike a lot. I looked at sports a lot, Adidas, Champion, you know, that sort of era of clothing and like culture, hip hop, it was a lot of stories. Yeah. It was, people were very much reverberating the things that they had been through or the people before them had been through. So I wanted to take that and sport, you're watching stories unfold in front of you and legends are being born every day in sport in all different levels somebody might be a local legend legend doesn't mean that everybody knows you in the world you know you can be a local legend in your own city yeah and and still inspire people and still deserve to be celebrated and nike would always do a really good job of telling stories through product and because that was my background especially the nba at the end of the day sports with newscasts and all that stuff it's like a soap opera they, you know, they capitalize on these stories and on these athletes to tell, you know, to give us entertainment. And we learn through these, we, we learn through the athletes what we believe to be true or false, but we still learn about them through these mediums. Yeah. And I wanted to create something that reflected that same enthusiasm with my passions through the brand or through the lens of something tangible. 
it almost sounds to me like you were subliminally studying these things, right? Because you were interested in them. Yeah. Obviously, you were yeah. a fan, but you were you're taking from it and applying it yeah. to mm -hmm. Bueno, right? Mm -hmm. So I try to place a story in everything. I mean, realistically, it's impossible to put a story in every single thing. But I try my absolute best to use my platform to amplify and tell these stories because if if we don't, who will? Yeah, they'll be forgotten. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I think that's pretty. That's like a DNA, like a DNA question, like the DNA of the brand. Like where does it where does it stem from? And I think that's that's where where that like idea comes from. Okay, so this might be a loaded question, mm -hmm. but five to six years in of Bueno at mm -hmm. this point. Mm -hmm. What would you say is the most important thing that you've come to learn? Mm, the most important thing that I've come to learn. I can give like two. Yeah, whatever comes I'll give a mind. personal side and like then the business advice side. Let's go. I love that. I'd say the personal side is patience. Okay. Sometimes we have a skewed perception of where we actually are and because we know how much work we're putting into it, but bad things happen to good people too. And good things happen to bad people too. Sometimes we find ourselves wondering why not me. Or maybe you feel like your work isn't good enough. It's easy to do that with social media nowadays. Yeah, exactly. You find yourself being your, you know, your own enemy, comparing yourself to others. But I believe patience is key. Understanding that it will come. It's practicing faith, really. It's the blind faith. Is if you believe in your heart of hearts that you're putting yourself in the best position to grow your business, to be successful, and you're unturning every possible stone that you can in a healthy way, there should be no reason why you feel a sense of inadequacy or a sense of regret. And I think through patience, it's a good place to start if you're dealing with growing something. Because again, to your point, social media, it's really easy to open your phone and see everybody having it figured out. Yeah. When in reality, nobody has it figured out. And I think once you realize that and you stop you know, if you're, especially if you're, com you're a competitive person and you're like constantly looking to the side, imagine you're trying to run a race against somebody and you're constantly looking to see where they actually are. You're not putting your best. Slows you down. Yeah, you're not putting your best foot forward to go as fast as you can forward. So just having that patience and understanding everything in due time and that no doesn't mean no, it just means not yet. Mm. You will find yourself reaping a lot more fruits of your labor. That's the personal side. I love that. The business side is resources. Resources. Sometimes you have ideas that are grander than what you have around you at your disposal. But if you amplify the community that you do have, make sure that the people that are around you feel heard, feel seen as a customer, you know, as a community member, as a supporter of what you're doing, word of mouth is the best marketing. The best. Mm -hmm. so if you're hmm, making sure that your community is taken care of the resources will grow you just make do with what you have yeah and you'll see that other doors start to open up other things start to open up and it may not be happening as fast as you would like it to but that's when patience comes in yeah those things work together um, True. but resources are important Networking is part of that resource pool. Getting to know people, asking questions. Don't be afraid to look dumb. Nobody knows everything. That's a good one. You know, closed mouth doesn't get fed. Even still now to this day, I find myself being like, I don't want to ask, but would you rather not know? Yeah. What are you going to do? Exactly. You're shooting yourself in the foot. There's so many aspects that come into play. It's, mm -hmm. it's insane. And mm -hmm. like, I think something that comes to mind is like, in regards to what you were saying is being able to walk confidently in your path when you're releasing something mm -hmm. and this applies to obviously with you with fashion and your clothing brand but it applies to anybody whether your music yeah whether you're it's a sense for of me it's a sense of vulnerability yeah and it's hard to to have the confidence to mm -hmm. release something and stand yeah. proudly behind Absolutely. it and not just 
Yeah. You know what I mean? Put it out there and be too cool to. Yeah. And I think just put it out. Yeah. You know, I, I, we all have to start somewhere. And it goes back to my point again about not everybody has everything. We all have to figure it out with the resources that we have. Somebody might be like, oh, I would have a good album, but man, I don't got the studio that. But Take you have excuse. something. Start there. Yeah. Do the best. People will realize potential. Mm-hmm. And then that's once you have them, it's about just keeping them there. Yeah. And everybody has something different. Like yeah. some people have connections that mm-hmm. might boost them farther than you. Yeah, for sure. So that's a huge part. It is. That's a huge yeah. Part. If you if you're you're whatever. But the thing is, art is so subjective. Mm-hmm. But you may think that your art is better than somebody else's. But if you're judging your journey based off of theirs, it's only going to do you a disservice Correct. because they're at the end of the day, they might have a connection that you might not have, Correct. but you might have something else that they might not have. Yeah, you know? absolutely. We don't know what other people's lives is like. So it's hard to say, Oh, well they have this and I don't have this. You might have something that's not even having to do with business. That is your blessing that they wish that they had. Maybe their business is far along, but they have a family member that's sick. Yeah. That's or true. maybe, and they're like, damn, you know what, I, I would trade half of my business to have the life, you know what I mean, to have a relationship with my parents. Mm-hmm. So I, it's just, this is a life thing, not just a business thing. And I think when we kind of step back and understand, especially when we're doing things where we're making products or putting music out or anything creative that is a sense of vulnerability, even if you don't get the reception that you want, at the end of the day, you're supposed to be doing things because you feel that they fulfill you. And I do believe if you feel as though you unturned every stone, it's okay to feel like there's things to learn. There's always things to learn. And I think you should always feel like there's room for growth. As long as you feel like you put your best foot forward, I don't think it really matters what the reception is. Because if you truly love what it is that you're doing, okay, we all have bills. I know this is like philosophical shit, but (laughs) you should be okay with living with the results. Living with the known to me is way better than living with the regret of not knowing That's what very could true. have been. That's very true. That would kill me inside. It's kind of corny. There's this video on social media that's going around where it says like, all the best ideas are in the graveyard. Ricky said that actually on his you know? podcast. So there yeah. you go. That's like me and Ricky also share like, and you need people like that where it's like, he finds a gem, he'll send it. I find a gem. You know, I'm reading a book. I'll call him and read the page. John too, I'll be like, I think this resonates with you. I want to read this to you. That's dope. That's a form you know? of intimacy with yeah, your friends. Yeah, for sure. You know, it's, you know, they're my tribe. And just like your business, I, tre- I think of it like a, as a child, you know, like you can't, you can't hide the child from the world. Too. You can't keep it too close to you. It has to go out there and you have to let it bump its head. You have to let it grow. You have to let it become its own thing. Because if you keep it too close, you'll never really know what the potential is. So it takes a village, man. It's just like raising a kid, you know? It it takes a village to to make it happen. You can't do it on your own. I know social media makes it seem like, you know, it's so easy. But even guys like, you know, like the Bricks and Wood team, the KOI team, even Paolo's team, all these, these brands, they have teams. They have people that are in position that care about what they do. And they're trying their best day in and day out, regardless of, you know, what circumstances happen outside of, you know, everybody has a life, you know? So yeah, it just, it just takes a tribe, man. It takes a village for yeah. sure. Even we, guys like Selection, mm-hmm. you know, a huge, huge team, you know, they do, you know, amazing things as a unit, Yeah, you know? And so, it's taken time for them or anybody else that you see as successful to build into that. You mm-hmm, know, mm-hmm. everybody had that starting point mm-hmm. where they didn't have it figured out. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And I mm-hmm. think that's important for people to hear, especially, you know, those that listen to this podcast, a lot of creatives that are just starting. Yeah. It's like you may not have all the things you need at first, but like mm-hmm. you're saying, the most important thing is just to start. Yeah. Like if you don't start, mm-hmm. like you were saying, the yeah. the regret of not doing something oh, is horrible. much worse yeah. than doing it and not getting sure. done because at the end of the day it's one of those things that's cliche to say but it's like if you look at yourself in the mirror and there's i can say this from personal experience mm-hmm. there's plenty of things that i wanted to do in life yeah. that i just wasn't successful at yeah but i knew in my heart of hearts that i gave it all i could give and that i ex- 
exhausted yeah. what I needed to do. It didn't end up happening, but I can live with myself because mm-hmm. I know deep inside that like I did everything that I could yeah. and vice versa. There's been things that I wanted to do and I didn't do them and mm-hmm. I felt that regret. You know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah, for sure. I agree. I agree. Yeah. I feel, I, f- I feel like you, it goes back to what we were saying too, is the life experiences thing. Like you really, you realize a lot of these things through just experiencing them. So this might be more of a, like might be a repetitive question, but entering your thirties, you said you're wow. 31 now, yep. what's something you wish you knew in your young twenties mm. that you know now, or something you wish you did in your young twenties, either or. Hmm. I didn't really, I did a lot, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, like I did a lot, um, in my twenties and, and I don't, uh, yeah, man, I just feel like I'm so blessed and by no way, shape or form am I saying I have it all figured out. I'm saying these things because they're things that I still use to this day. I'm not, the business is humongous, you know, we're still very much growing, but man, I, I I can't lie, I don't think I would really change much. Or like, I don't think there's anything I would really like, oh, if you saw your younger self, what would you say? You know, I feel like I'm so blessed to even be in this position. I love that perspective. Even maybe lucky, you know, to some extent. I do think luck has a little bit to do with it as well. You need a little luck sometimes in life. There's a quote that says, I mean, it's cliche too, but luck is when preparation meets opportunity. Yeah, I just... Yeah, I don't really have like a, um, I'm more so excited to see what the future has. Not so much looking back. Okay. More like looking forward. I think I did everything I needed to do to get like to this point. Maybe in like, I wish I would have had like the college experience. Really? You know, like, oh, let me go to a university <laughs> and like sleep in a dorm. I always wish I had that. Life didn't give me that. I went to a community college, which is now a regular college. So now, I'm, you oh. know. They're going. They're moving up in the world. There you go. You um, got that on your resume. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah, I only did my two years, and then I realized like, hey, this is just not for me. Even though I was putting in a lot of hard work, you know, school is hard, man. Mm-hmm. Even I think the creative entrepreneurship side of things has become a little bit glorified. When yeah, it's definitely. not easy. It's hard. And on the flip side, having a nine to five job is hard. It is. It's not easy to get up every day, go listen to somebody else to tell you what to do. It's not easy to answer emails. It's not easy to deal with customers. It's not easy. It's none of it is easy. And I think a lot of people have this like idea of like wanting to work for self. And I think that's amazing. I say, try it because then you'll realize what you're cut for. Well, sometimes there's more hours in the creative entrepreneur field than you're putting in that nine sometimes. to five. Most times. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, a lot of the time I'm spending a lot more time, but it doesn't feel that way because I enjoy it. It's so, almost like choose your hard. Yeah. What hard do you want? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And listen, there's something to be said about stability. Yeah. And having you know, your, your stuff figured out pretty much by somebody else. So the health benefits are there, you know, the tax, your refund is there, you know what I mean? It's just a different um, a different hurdle, but I don't know if that uh, went off topic, but. No, I mean, it sounds like you like you said, you're look, more looking forward to, to yeah. what's to come yeah, yeah, rather yeah, yeah. than. Oh yeah, you yeah. asked me about like, the tw- like something from my 20s, I would, yeah, I don't really have, um, yeah, I don't really have much. Fair enough, yeah. 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 The, so with that said, mm-hmm. what would you say is different about your mindset now versus previous stages of your life more mature more mature yeah in certain areas or just overall in general in general yeah yeah i was very immature really even though i was always a hard worker and i always was eh, i don't want to say always i'd be lying i wasn't the most disciplined maybe if i would okay maybe if i could go back and say the young be like be more disciplined okay be more decisive but it's kind of hard because what if you're disciplining yourself on the wrong thing what if it's too early to put some discipline on something that you don't really like That's that you're not point. really passionate about? So it's kind of hard to say. It's all relative at the end of the day, but damn, now you got me thinking back. What was the question again? <laughs> no, what's different about your mindset now than yeah, in previous stages of your life? More mature, more mature. I'm less concerned with like going out. Okay. And not to say that there isn't value in that because I do personally feel like I miss the mark sometimes. I'm like not going out and... It's not that I don't want to go out or I don't want to go to events and network and 
because that's a huge portion and I feel like is an opportunity for me. Is Showing face. I don't go out as much as I used to, but things are growing and I kind of have to leverage what's worth, quote unquote, the time. Could I be working on something? Is there what is really going to benefit? But you don't really know. LA is one of those places where that's why I feel like I'm missing the mark on it is you never know who you can meet. Oh, 100%. You never know who you can meet. Magic you, happens out here. You yeah. can walk the street and bump into the right person. Yeah. I mean, for your case, it's a perfect example of that with the whole Paulo story. Oh, yeah. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's true. That's true. So, yeah. I think what that reminds me of is intentionality. And mm -hmm. somebody that spoke on this really well was uh, Joe K mm -hmm. about being intentional, like yeah. with what you're saying. You know what I mean? Going out less necessary isn't a bad thing, but when you do go out, it's like, what's your intention? Are yeah, you going that's true. out? You know what I mean? Yeah, Are you yeah, going yeah, out true. for a reason? I would say right now, as far as the word intentional, I've been really intentional with like my spending. Ooh, with your spending. Yeah. Cause yeah, I buy things I don't necessarily need or I over commodify things. I think the intentionality for me in my life has been going towards like how I use my money. Mm. Cause it goes fast in LA. <laughs> it really does. It goes fast in LA, especially when you like clothes and you like nice things. Yeah. You know, maybe you didn't have everything you ever wanted, even though I can't say that, you know, I went without a lot of times in my life because my parents were very hard to give me the things that I had. Mm -hmm. But you know, yeah. Who doesn't like nice things? Of course so, you work hard. You want to yeah, give yourself nice yeah. things, but it goes back to sacrifice with that. It's sometimes you have to fight that urge you know and shout out to joe k that's a good that's a good nugget right there the intentionality is definitely something that i uh that i practice in my life as of maybe three months ago three months ago yeah trying to oh well, actually i stopped going out really too much like last year but mm -hmm. i still very much enjoyed i'm still very social yeah of course um but yeah did has has anything recently, whether it's live events or just things we've all gone through, whether it's, you know, we entered a new year of 2023 or whether it's, you know, we're coming out of that COVID situation. Have it, have it, has it caused you to reevaluate your priorities at all? Cause that's what it almost sounds like your priorities yeah, are changing. Yeah, they are. Um, honestly, the pandemic helped me realize what it was going to take to take my business to the next level. Okay. Cause I had nothing but time and I told myself I didn't want to be that guy who came out of the pandemic with nothing to show for it. When all I was used to complain about was I don't have time, I don't have time, I don't have time. Now that you have time, now that excuse is gone, mm. now what? Well, so you something you touched on a little bit earlier was you're very forward thinking right now. You're more looking yeah. towards what's gonna be coming. So yeah. what's next to come for you? What goals do you have? Or what's next to come for Bueno as and a brand? I'm gonna be super transparent. Okay. I think right now as a person, uh not that i'm lacking goals i think i'm lacking direction mm. as a person what do you mean by that it's hard to strive towards something when you don't know what you're striving for as a person okay so it's kind of like i'm big on setting goals like i like to write things like i write every single day even if it's something like take vitamins walk the dog feed the dog I find value in writing things out. Is it a journal? Or? Yeah, journal. Okay. So I go through like two to three notebooks in a year. Wow. Like writing every single day. Interesting. Um, yeah, and I think I'm in a crossroads right now where I don't necessarily know what's next for me as a person because I've become so engulfed in the brand that I felt like I've kind of lost uh, my own way as a person. Hmm. And uh, it really came to realization when I was with my parents last October, my mom was like, don't let that, your business become your personality. Wow. So um, that kind of like woke me up a little bit as far as like not, be, not letting all of this be all that matters, uh, which is hard when you're away from family and things like that and everybody's doing something creative and this person's having an event and this person opened a store and this person got a collab and you know, you want to support everybody, but you don't want to lose yourself like along the way. Mm -hmm. So um, as much as I would love to have an answer for you, I don't really have a personal goal, unfortunately. Well, I that think that doesn't a, have to do with running. 
the running yeah. so running is something yeah new. i'm running right now i'm trying to do a half marathon and a full marathon within this year that's fire but as far as like my personal goals it sounds kind of crazy but i'm kind of in the point right now where i'm reevaluating what matters to me what type of man i want to be you know that means like what type of dog dad what type of son what type of friend boyfriend whatever however you want to slice it um what does that look like in a few years no that's an answer in itself and i appreciate the transparency and vulnerability about that because that is something that we need more of yeah you know too many people are out here gotta be real you know what i mean faking it for the (laughs) i don't have it all figured out thank you for saying that yeah i don't (laughs) so i'm just trying my best man it's okay to not have everything figured out too yeah of course of course you know i hope that next time i come back like i can say hey you know when i was at that crossroad I decided to do X, Y, and Z, you know? And Mm. as you get older, you become more rooted. You know, when I left home, I was 23 Mm. and I'm about to be 32. So there's a drastic difference, not only in location, but age and experience in life and the things that I want. I feel like I've done so much. Actually, you know what? Now that we're, we're kind of peeling things back here. Yeah, let's do it. Keep me on track. Remember this point so I can come back nah, to it. Let's go there, bro. Let's the go younger, there. the younger, when I was leaving home, I had a crossroads where I was like, do I want to go to Miami, New York, or LA? Mm. And I weighed my options and I made the best decision of my life. Which was Because it has been nothing but beneficial. I've met nothing but great people and I've been very blessed. I feel like I'm at that crossroads as an adult now. So the younger me... I wouldn't even ask, I wouldn't even tell the younger me something. I'd wish I had something of that younger me still inside. Oh, interesting. Where it would okay. be like, I don't want to overthink so much. I don't want to weigh so many options. Because la- cause when you were younger, you were just moving off instincts. Yeah, I'm yeah. just like, this is what I want to do. I'm going to do that. I didn't have a dog. I didn't have an apartment. I didn't have bills. I didn't have a business. You know, it was a lot more flexibility. I see. It was, and I've worked see. very hard last year to become flexible, like paying all of my debt off, doing those things, cleaning up mistakes that kind of linger, um, taking care of my credit, you know, mm-hmm. getting like the things that matter for Alexander, not necessarily for the business in order. But now I'm at that point. See, that was a goal for last year. Last year, I was like, I want to do a pop-up internationally. I want to work with friends. Uh, I want to do ComplexCon again. And, you know, amongst other things that all got checked off. Dream bigger. You know, I feel like I've been able to accomplish things, but I need to dream bigger. And now I'm at that crossover where it's like, okay, so what does bigger look like for me as a person and for Bueno as a business? And how do they work together? Very well said. So yeah do you think that accomplishing those goals that you accomplished Mm -hmm. do you think that helps you build confidence to think that you could do bigger and greater things and set bigger goals for yourself yeah for sure because i think um especially coming from like a small town you see some of these things and you think they're so impossible yeah and i'm a i'm somebody that even my friends tell me all the time is like you don't celebrate your success enough because i'm a firm believer of like this is what's supposed to happen like that's how strong that my faith is and what it is that I'm doing is I don't celebrate it because it's supposed to happen. It's like, again, we've been using the word cliche a lot, but it's kind of <laughs> cliche like when Kobe says like job's not finished. Yeah. For me, I do believe it's important to celebrate, but I don't, I don't want to celebrate Eastern Conference Championship. I see what you're saying. I want to celebrate like trophy. I want to celebrate dynasty. So I'm hungry. I'm just trying to channel that hunger into what needs to be done in the business but also making sure i'm taking care of my mind my body my soul within that so i created a plan that is in the progress of being completed where i put me at the top of it and then i put five things that i felt like are most valuable to me wow so uh it was like relationships which was you know family and friends or uh my relationship then community was like family and friends. Uh, business, success, and then it was like self, which is like mind, body, and soul. Okay. So I'm still in the process of, I believe if I can break those things down, 
I can kind of use it as a map as far as what's most important to me, and I can set goals within those parameters. Because at least you know what's most important to you from Correct. like a high level. Correct. So the rest falls in. Correct. I like that. So that's pretty much like what it is that I'm that I'm focusing on, that I'm working towards. Just working more on self because the world that you live in is a reflection of you inside. What your eye see is what your brain is is what your brain is telling your eyes. Your eyes just act as receptors and they pull that image into your head. Your your brain can manipulate that image to whatever it is. When you're depressed, the world looks way yeah. different on a sunny day than when you're excited and happy to be there. That reminds me of that. I don't know if she's that meme of those two guys in a school bus. And one guy's nah, looking out the window, and it's like fire. Oh yes, exactly. And the other one's like yes. beautiful mountain. It's like a mountain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I seen that. Yeah, it's it's exactly that. It's the perspective. And I'd be lying to you if I haven't dealt with you know those things where you feel maybe like you're down or like you know you might feel a little depressed or whatever. It's natural, but you have to put the active work into loving you, working on the inside of you, and then because it's easy for me to say like I want a Nike collab, or I want a shoe collab or I wanna work with this company, or I wanna work at that company, it's a little bit more logical, mm -hmm. but it's hard to reach the goals that you want in your life if you're not taking care of you. Yeah, that's a very good you point. Know? Yeah. And I'm not saying that I don't take care of me, I just think I've been blessed to reach to a point where it's like I've kind of accomplished the things that, I've, that I set out to and I'm realizing I didn't dream big enough. So now I'm kind of deciding what is the next framework because the framework that I created earlier worked. It took some time, but it was beneficial. So what does this next framework look like for me? I was having a conversation with John Ojo, mm. and we were talking about midlife crisis. By the way, if I'm talking too much. No, please go. Know. This is going um, to a good place. We are talking about midlife crisis, and the life expectancy for Americans is between 70 and 80 years old. Is it really? Yes. So technically, a midlife crisis is not 50. Your midlife is 35. Wow. 40. I didn't so know that. I'm entering 32, getting closer into that space where I'm starting to feel that, that pressure of like, okay, what are these next couple years going to look like? But the pressure is self-inflicted. Nobody's calling me and saying, hey, you're 31. <laughs> what the fuck is going on? You know that what I mean? Like, true. It's, it's not like that at all. Um, but sometimes we place like this imaginary weight on ourselves of expectation because we see something special inside of us and we're so hungry for the success or for this dream or for this girl or for this job or whatever it is that you want to quantify it as we get lost and it's okay to sometimes reel yourself back in. You know, sometimes you feel like you're lost that ocean and you're there by yourself, but there's always that rope that you can pull at to get you back to shore. There's always that rope. You just got to remember, you tied it around your waist before you went into the ocean. It's there. You might not feel it, but you can get yourself back. Yeah. You just have to do the work to take care of yourself and make sure that you are good because it's going to reflect everything it is that you're working on creatively with your family, with your friends. If you're investing in stock, whatever, whatever it is that you do, it's going to be a reflection of you. So... Yeah, that's kind of where I'm at with the whole goal situation. I'm at a crossroads. I don't really know. I can see what's next for Bueno, but I need, I'm trying to see what's next for me. <laughs> that's, a, yeah. that's a bar. Yeah. I think that's important to think about. Too many times we're not thinking about ourselves. Cheers to that. Yeah, literally cheers to that. <laughs> cheers. 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 Cheers to, to understanding yourself, understanding your perspective, mm -hmm. being mm -hmm. okay with not knowing what's next. Yeah. With everything that you just said, bro. Honestly, I think that a lot of that resonates with me too, because what you're saying and people listening right now resonates yeah. with them as well. Like we all go through those things yeah. and it's important to talk about. Absolutely. Absolutely. It, I was talking to John earlier today and I was telling him I was coming on, coming on your podcast Fire. and he was like, yeah, you should do that. He's a cool dude. Yada, yada, yada. And I was like, yo, you know what, to be honest, like I don't, really wanted to be focused so much on clothes like i want this to be able to like help people i love like that. what we talk about because it's, it's easy to talk about accolades that's your highlights everybody knows their highlights that's what your instagram is <laughs> literally you know everybody knows your highlights but like to me it's important to know like what type of person is behind what it is that you're supporting and i feel you like know? we've gotten a lot of that from you on this episode and you've been 
very good about being vulnerable Thank about you. the things that you've been I through. Appreciate that. And I think yeah. it's going to help a lot of people. And what you're saying as well, like we haven't even touched on the accolades. There's so many things, yeah, cool things done, that you did last yeah, year specifically absolutely. and before yeah, that. Yeah, absolutely. You know? It's been an amazing, amazing journey. But yeah, I think right now I'm on a, on a, on a self journey. Okay. You know, like trying to, trying to figure out like what, what Alexander wants. Yeah, man. You know? Well, I'm excited to see what that ends up Oh, coming man. to in fruition yeah, and me too. Me what's too. next for you because i think you know sky's the limit oh, yeah. we haven't reached anywhere near that ceiling yeah for sure and you obviously have that belief and faith in yourself so yeah i'm excited to see what's to come with that yeah i think every anybody who's like listening to this right now whether you have something going on right now whether you don't have something going on right now whether you want to start something whatever i think the best thing that you could do is just to try you will, the work here's the thing about work it's never gonna stop <laughs> you're always gonna have work there's not there's not a there's not a life out there that doesn't require some form some shape of work so put your head down work hard try new things discover new things travel explore self explore other people I've been trying to do this exercise where uh, every day, it's from the Jay Shetty book, Think Like a Monk. Ooh, very good book. Um, where he learned to appreciate the life around him without adding anything new. Whereas it's like looking at a new stone, realizing a new tree, maybe recognizing the neighbor's dog that you haven't seen and how cute it is. Or, you know, just being more of aware of your surroundings. And one of the exercises is just like talking to somebody new like not just being like hello blah 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 but in a, we're, our world is becoming very automated like even at the grocery store i feel like ralph should fucking pay me because i ring up my own groceries yeah, yeah, yeah. Stop you know? out. yeah, yeah. I'm like i'm doing the work <laughs> here you know there's like a lady handing me bags that i paid for that's a fact i miss like having that personal interaction so part of the exercise is just having a conversation with someone that you don't know or maybe somebody that you see all the time like a grocery store worker that you never say anything to that you're just like yo what up yo what up it's just like, no, how are you? Like, oh, I'm good. Like, no, how are you? Yeah. It takes two, three minutes out of your day. Too often that response is automated itself. Yeah. I do it too. Yeah. You know, my neighbor might walk by and it's just like, yo, yo, what up, what up? Yeah. But it, and it doesn't have to be, if you're listening to this, every single person. No, It just starts not. with like yeah. once or twice. Cause no, ain't nobody about to pour their yeah, entire of lives course, on somebody. Of course. But it's just more so like allowing people to be seen. Yeah. You know, not like recognizing that you're not just... I don't see you as just the guy who gets the salmon out of the thing at, at Ralph's. Like, I realize that you're Adam, you know what I mean? Yeah. Or I realize that you're Susan, you know, or whoever, like at Trader Joe's or Whole Foods or so on and so forth. So, yeah, just trying to be just like a good person out here, man, and just create these goals for self and move forward from that point. Absolutely, man. Yeah. Well, I appreciate it, bro. Uh, we're going to end on that. I appreciate it again for your vulnerability, your of time. Course. No, no, no problem. You no dropped problem. some gems, some bars yeah, in this. No so problem, I'm, no I'm sure that a lot of I feel of like I was going to say so much more, but <laughs> it's like you always feel like there's more. But uh, yeah, I feel like I'm, good. I'm cool with that. Yeah, bro. Is there any last words that you have with that said or anything else? Where can people follow your journey um, if they want to follow you or Bueno? Um, yeah, you can follow Bueno first. <laughs> at it means this good first uh it means good.com definitely uh spring is going to be coming within the next month so there'll be some new stuff there some special projects hopefully you know we'll see what comes down the pipeline but i don't want to count my chickens before they hatch i mm. uh, don't want to speak on anything too soon or you know but let's speak it into existence that, it's important. Uh, there's some things coming down the pipeline so yeah and then you can follow me at alexander blaine um alexander underscore blaine um and yeah that's pretty much where you can find me fire bro yeah. well again excited to see what thank you i you appreciate continue it. to develop into yes, I, thank I'm, you. I'm in your corner rooting for you thank and you. we'll have to do this again another time man yes sir thank you for having me I absolutely appreciate it. thank you awesome from creative ambiance this is levi alexander blaine checking out we'll see you next time peace peace